so it's time to see the PSSH which is essentially pseudo steady state hypothesis and I love it because it sounds so fancy and it has nothing that complex at all so by definition or by the definition of this hypothesis is that the rate of reaction of an active intermediate is zero in general or more let's say technically speaking the addition of every single rate of reaction of the all the steps is going uh, is going to be zero. So you got three reactions. The total must be zero. Let's do an exercise with the PSSH, which is essentially the pseudo steady state hypothesis in isomethane. This isomethane also because of the nitrogen, methane probably you know because of methane. We need to explain this because sometimes it acts as second order and sometimes it acts with first order. So it's kind of strange. Probably if you were doing data, you will be like, what's happening here? Either it's first order or second order. Why do we, or why is it changing? So in theory, if we were to apply the elementary right law, we have this one. So essentially it's CA to the ASO. From now on, all this stuff is going to be called ASO. That's my thing. So the rate of reaction of azomethane will be equal to the constant times the concentration of azomethane to the first power. And as you can see, experimental data has shown, I told you before, that when you have high concentrations, it acts as a first order. But when you have low concentrations, it acts as a second order. So at least you know that when high concentration is used, you can use this. High concentrations, you can use this. So it's kind of tricky and you're probably asking yourself why. Or at least if you were doing the experiment, you will be worried about that. Now let's see the actual mechanism. It has three reactions. And the model goes like this. You got the azomethane, breaks down into ethane and nitrogen gas. So essentially, this guy goes with another molecule of itself and they collide. One will gain this intermediate active or active intermediate and the other one will stay here normally. Now this guy here, the same one here, this one goes here, will collide once again with this one but they are now ready to react. So you have them here, you're probably saying that this here is the same as this here but no, they are now ready to react and this intermediate will react simply to form C2H6 and the nitrogen. So hopefully it gets, let me take a wake up, yeah. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. Let me calculate the rate of reactions of each one of these. These are by definition elementary rate laws. Because you are already working with intermediate actives or yeah, intermediate actives and yeah, just do it to the first one, to the second one, and to the third one, you will get these ones here. Of course, this, actually, if you were to add it, it's two times the ASO compound, so that's why it's to the square com uh, to the square power. The second one is one tricky question. Many students ask me if they should consider them as one or as two. It's, of course, two because this is the excited or the high energy molecule, and this is not the high energy molecule, so they interact different. So use them as if they were different. And then, of course, the acyl excited goes along here. Now, probably you seen before, I show you the PSSH. By definition, the addition of every rate of reaction will give you zero. So let's add the first one, the second one, and the third one, which are this one here. Let us add it. And since this is negative, negative is positive. I showed here and I take out the concentration of the azomethane in excited state and since this is zero, actually I just send this one here just solve for this guy and you should get this if you have no idea what I'm doing just do it slowly and you will understand this is R1, R2, R3 and yeah you will get this in terms of concentration of A azomethane now let's go back to the product, you have this rate of reaction 
and you know it's the constant times the concentration but of the excited state here so we got the here and this one here and this one here I told you before let's substitute this guy here in here and yeah essentially we're done this one is our last equation and one thing I want to show you guys is what happens when you start changing the concentration with this term. So the term was K3, K1 times CA, A so to the second one, and K2, A so power plus K3. So we have this. What will happen if I choose this one here, those here, and if this guy here is way lower than K3. The thing is easy, you will cancel this concept and you will be left with this K3, K1 and K3 which actually could be said this is another constant of course not one. Oh yeah you cancel K3 and K3 you get K1 and concentration of the asom methane to the second power that's why I told you guys before that let me go back this is to the second, second order this is the case when you are interacting with very low concentrations of azomethane. But what happens when you are working with high concentration of azomethane? This number will be huge compared to K3. So from the past, let me rewrite it again. You have it here, K2. So what happens when this number is so small, you can actually say it's zero and you can cancel the concentration with the second concentration and you will get this uh, K3, K1 divided by K2 which you can say this is a constant let's say huge K and CA goes one, one CA and you get CA or concentration of methane with this constant so essentially what I want to give you the summary is when you work with high concentrations of methane, you're going to get first order, when you work with a uh, low concentration of azomethane, you're going to get second order. And essentially it's everything guys. The thing here is that we say apparent order because you cannot say it's first order or second order, but apparently or when you work with it, it sounds like or it, it might be. This is the concept apparent order. At high concentration the reaction seems to be very important seems to seems to be of first order with re respect of the azomethane. With low concentrations, the reaction seems to be of now once again seems to be of second order, second first order with respect of azomethane. Once again, I have it here in case you miss it, but it's so easy, guys. And yeah, we're going to finish this part right here, and that was everything on the pseudo steady state hypothesis what's up guys it's me chemical engineering guy so if you like the video why not push the like button it really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.